Hello and welcome. Uh, today is a little bit different yet again. <laughs> I think you're starting to realise that I do something different each time. Um, I'm not out on the sib today. I'm not out on the boat today, unfortunately. The weather seems pretty amazing out there and, and, I, and I wish I was, but my sib is currently being serviced at the moment and so is my engine. So yeah, hence I'm not out. But today I wanted to do something a little bit different and talk about um, Navionics and finding marks and finding your own uh, places to where you can go fishing. Um, I've had quite a few people come up to me and say, uh, where, where do I find marks? How do I get, how do I know where to fish? And this is really for people who are starting out boat fishing uh, from scratch uh, or, or first time out in a sib or kayak and you're thinking, where can I go? Well, Historically, um, fishing and finding marks was always a bit tricky. It was passed down from a skipper to skipper, or you would have knowledge from charters, or you would have knowledge from uh, various other people that would tell you where to go. Uh, or you might have to find a list of, of wrecks and GPS, and you'd have to look at compasses and, and try and work out where those wrecks were to be able to find them. And then it was very much the luck of the draw. But things have changed so much in the last few years. And one of the biggest changes that we have is we have now things uh, or apps called Navionics. Navionics is one of the, the best apps around. I, I think it's fantastic. And the relief shading on it is, is amazing. It's a complete game changer. So if you are starting out, uh, I highly recommend that you do get Navionics and learn it. I'm going to show you a little bit of it today and how to find marks uh, and things on Navionics. But if you want something more detailed, just go and learn Navionics. There's so many other uh, YouTube videos out there on Navionics that will be able to give you that in-depth knowledge. Um, but mine today is really kind of a very simple overview and also very much how to find those fish marks and, and where to go fishing. So yeah. It's a bit different. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. I will try and answer them. Um, but yeah, so let's let's get back into Navionics and, and have a closer look and see what we're gonna find. Hopefully you now can see this. This is my Navionics screen on my iPad. And um, just gonna give you a very quick overview of a few things on here. There's a few different menus that you will have down. I'm gonna use my pen to show you. Um, uh, options down there where you can have the maps you can have and this is the one you want relief shading uh, you've got various other charts and things that you can load up here as well um, but this is a the one that you probably want to have a look at let's go back into that so first off I'm over the area of Little Hampton I've chosen an area that I'm not familiar with I don't know much about um, and I have not really fished uh, in fact, I've fished with Lillehampton a few times, but not a huge amount. So I have not loaded this screen with all of my marks and locations. But I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of what, if I'm going to go and fish this area, what would I look for on Navionics? And what kind of information would I uh, take from this? So first things first, this is the port of, of Littlehampton there. So you can zoom in and you can see the, the port of Littlehampton. Um, now... The relief shading shows you the different colors defined by the different depths as well. It also then does have uh, your contour lines as well. So you'll be able to see and it should be able to align with all of your charts. Now, if I'm looking for fishing locations, uh, particularly for a sib or a kayak, uh, the only thing I will say is these areas here that are in the red, these are very, very shallow depths and potentially could be cut off by the tide or other things. So these are the things that you do need to watch out for, especially where you see those little red dots there with the crosses in them. These are points of danger where you can have exposed rocks. So if you're out in a sib, go very careful because these could be you know half a mile out a mile out and you could end up in in great danger the other thing that you need to watch for these are very strong tides so if you are on a particularly high tide or, or low tides uh, when you have got particularly shallow ground even further out you can find that the tide runs through these uh, these areas these shallow spots incredibly fast it causes the water to boil and ripple so these can be very, very dangerous places to fish. So this is the one kind of word of warning. If you do fish areas like that, that are particularly shallow, uh, go very, very careful. So what I'm looking for when I am going fishing. So first thing is 
you've got to think how do the fish think most people would say okay let's go and find a reef well these areas you see here the bogner rocks all the way down this is a natural area of reef underneath and you will probably find this area of reef is going to be littered with fish absolutely covered in fish so you'll probably have all types of fish in these grounds you're probably going to have bream you're going to have wrasse you're going to have pollock you'll even have bass so these kinds of grounds that you'll be seeing there will be really uh, has, have loads of fish on them and they'll probably um, do really well uh, which is always a, a good thing so those are always quite easy spots and things to find but there's a few other things that I would look for these things are often overlooked these are small little ledges that you'll see overlooked and you'll probably find if you're looking for bass especially bass will be swimming along alongside these edges or underneath these edges and waiting for the bait fish to blow over in the tide and as the bait fish blow over they will then um, take them out so edge ledges like that should never be overlooked and if you're wanting a, a large bass ledges like that can often be very very productive so let's go a little bit further out and see what we have here right okay so when you go further and deeper, we're, we're, we're several miles offshore now, we're probably about seven or eight miles offshore, just from guessing, I think, looking at the, the thing from a distance. Um, this here is Cardinal Boy, worth knowing. Uh, Cardinal Boys, if the downward arrows means it's a south Cardinal Boy, which means it provides safe passage south of the boy. North of the boy has dangers with it and dangers associated. So if you're looking within this area, there's a couple of things that you'll notice here. This mark here, which is almost looks like an X on it with two sides, that means it's a wreck. Now, if you look at the relief shading and zoom in, you will see that the wreck is on the bottom here. Some of them, um, you'll be able to see the, the wind, or it's not the wind, but the tide blown of the sand off of that, that direction as well. So those are wrecks those are normally very very good for fishing as well and provide great uh points but often wrecks can be very overfished as well so not all wrecks are amazing some are some aren't but they're also very much pouting hotspots now this is a very interesting ledge do you see the contour lines here how tight these contour lines are these are incredibly, incredibly tight. So that means that the ledge running up to here will be very, very, very steep indeed. So you're coming from uh, quite deep ground. I mean, looking at it, I can't see my marks here, but you're probably talking about, here we go, um, 37, 38, even 40. Here we go. In the deepest point, you've got 62 meters deep. So that's a very deep hole um, all the way up to the shallows of about four or five meters there. So you can see that this is almost like a mountain underneath the sea here at this point. So you will have uh, some incredible fish life around the side of here, uh, right along the sides. And even in the depth of the hole, you're going to have uh, various other uh, fish as well. Something I've found is cod especially like to, to swim within the shallows. So if you are, for example, if I was going for cod, I'd be looking for these grounds, this ground right here. And you'll often find that there might be cod hiding in these little shallows or these holes. So if you're fishing over the top, this is, might be where you'll be finding the cod hidden in these parts here. So that's always something to consider. But going for sharks, rays, other things like that, you, you know, you, you could pick them up anywhere around here, actually. Um, but I would say this is a really interesting space because you'll be watching the water and where does the water flow around here? Where does the tide flow? And this will be creating quite some uh, powerful underwater currents, especially here. And you'll have the turbulence up against the side of this. So you'll be having a lot of bait fish swimming around here and you will have a lot of the predators swimming around here. So this area here, I would say, would be a, a really hot spot for, for fishing as well definitely definitely worth looking for moving across here we go here's another interesting one when you often see these types of things across these are sandbanks sandbanks are are great and you can see it's the navionics already has a mark here to say that this is a fishing hot spot if you kick it it says terry spot click on that again and somebody said that it's a fishing and diving hot spot so there's a bit of a tip for you there. But when you're looking at the sandbanks, as the tide blows over, 
these, it sort of deposits sounds on the outside. So you'll often find one part of the bank will be steeper than the other. Now, if you're on a long drift, this is a nice long drift where you could literally just sit on your boat and drift along the whole lot in the uh, in in the tide. And uh, as you're drifting across, you'll find that fish tend to hide on one side of the bank and you may get um, takes from one side of the bank. Banks this far out, uh, I'd say you could even pick up some really good greater weavers off this bank. I wouldn't be surprised. Not fished here before, but look, I wouldn't be surprised if you pick um, uh, turbot off these banks and brill off these banks. Um, uh, you'll even get, you know, uh, some really good rays off those banks as well. So, yeah. And then right at the other end of the bank, you've got another wreck there. Look, this wreck there. So you could potentially have, I mean, this seems like a really great spot for fishing. <laughs> I think I might come down here before. And then you're back onto the, the more of the rocky reef ground here, as you can see. And I would, if I was coming down to the reef, I mean, the temptation is just to sit right on top of the reef or, uh, and to fish. But actually, I would be looking at these tiny little areas along the side here, these little drop-offs and concentrating on these drop-offs. But as a bit of a hint, when you're coming down to fishing these grounds and you're drifting across, never ever power back over your drift. Don't do that. When you're finished your drift, come back round a nice big circle and then start the drift in the same place, especially if you're having luck. So that's, as you can see, uh, from Little Hampton, some, some really, really good places. Here's another one. It's known as the hole. Um, quite show showing you can see this is a fishing hotspot right up against that ledge there you can see how it's uh, already been marked now what often you'll find is this type of ground um, this is often appears now this is uh, I would say fairly shaly ground uh, where you're having it's not reef uh, but it's not sand either so you're going to have lots of shaly mixed kind of ground on these patches uh, you could well end up having kelp beds or other things growing there as well some of that can be really productive and i'd say really productive for for rays and some kind of flatfish or other things as well so never ever kind of discount those grounds when you're looking for fishing patches um Right, that's what else can we find on this? Just zooming out. I mean, to be honest with you, I would very rarely go out this far in, in, in a sib. Um, let's go and have a look. Oh, yeah, Kingsmere. Kingsmere rocks. Um, you can see the rock bed underneath. The Kingsmere rock bed is is very well known as a as a bit of a fishing hotspot and you can see why i mean look at it you can see the rock sort of coming out from underneath and it's just it's covered with fishing marks and you can see all these fishing marks up here and it's because i mean in the summer it's amazing for bream pollock bass pretty much everything and you'll see everybody will come to the kingsmere but you see the thing is when people come to the kingsmere they will often miss some golden patches. And so I, if you're, if it's the Kingsmere is covered with boats, I'd come here, look. This is a nice little reef, rocky outcrop. And potentially you could end up having some really nice fish there. Again, up on these banks here, you've got these little banks here. They will be hiding some, some lovely bass that will be swimming along the sides of these. So always worth bringing your lures and, and fishing those as well. And you'll probably find that everybody will be heading to the main fishing hotspots, um, but completely missing those. Again, if you look across there, you can see this going across. There's a really nice kind of line heading across here with these ridge. That would definitely be worth looking at as well and fishing over. And you'll probably be having some, um, some great fish off of that, real mixed species. So yeah, I mean, as you can see, Navionics, um, is so informative and it gives you a lot of information the one thing our last thing i'll say is these tide markers they will tell you the tide it's worth having a look at them and saying so at the moment you can see it's a dover tide hang on it's over east it brings you to your tide and it tells you where it is on the actual tide so where you're on the low point versus the high point and which direction the tide is flowing in uh, traditionally we used to have to work these out using tidal diamonds 
So there, you, on old charts, you'll see a diamond on their charts, and we would have to work out the compass bearing and directions of the tides. Navionics is actually very good. It's providing you the information that you need for directions of the tides as well. So if you are flowing, you're coming from the ebb, or you're coming uh, on the flood, it's worth knowing which direction of the tide is blowing. As you can see here, it's still blowing. So it's blowing from your uh, east to the west and then it will blow the opposite way as well. Most people think the tide goes in or out. It doesn't. It actually goes in multiple different directions. So don't just uh, assume that. Um, so yeah, it's always worth planning that because you'll find some of these marks will fish much better on the flood. Um, some of them will fish much better on the ebb. So just because you fished one mark uh, and you haven't really got anything, it could also very much be the state of tide. So don't just rule it out and say, um, it's it's not worth it at all. It's always, always worth it. Um, last thing I just wanted to show you, if I can move up. The weather and the tide. The weather and the tide is a, a really useful one to know. Um, and it keeps you up to date with everything. But at the bottom, you see these buoys. If you click on the buoys, the Greenwich Lightship, so this is my local one to me. The Greenwich Lightship is incredibly important because what it does is it provides me live updates from the Greenwich Lightship of what the actual um, wind is. So it's currently 11 knots uh, north northeast. Um, it's showing me what kind of uh, the swell we're talking about and there's pretty much no swell at all and what the pressure is as well. So this is a really, really useful one to understand. And as you can see, air temperature is 11 degrees, that's fine. Sea temperature is 14 degrees. But the thing that you need to watch is the pressure variation. If the pressure variation drops more than 10 millibar, you will end up having quite quick winds uh, and the winds will really pick up. So if you're on a sib and you are sort of like me, seven, eight miles from shore, and uh, I've got a, a pressure sensor alarm that tells me when the pressure drops. If the pressure starts dropping rapidly, I head in because I do not want to be caught out far out at sea with um, uh, high winds. It's just not fun and it's not comfortable. So that's definitely worth considering as well. So keep an eye on the actual weather, the live weather out on the, the Greenwich Lightships or your other boys, weather boys as well. So that's quite an important one to remember. But yeah. Navionics is oh, Navionics is full of information, um, so definitely worth getting. If you get a standard package, it will look like this, um, where it's basically old-fashioned charts or looks like old-fashioned charts, and then you need to work out things yourself. But if you get the full version and you download the relief shading, that is the way you'll get this kind of level of detail as well underneath. And you can see these. So there we go, back out by the wind farm here just south of Brighton, and uh, you can see some rather fantastic spots here uh, for fishing. All of these fantastic little reef spots coming, even a small little wreck. And, oh yeah, this is the other thing I was going to point out to you. On the traditional charts, you would see a wreck, and it'll show you as a sign of a wreck. You would get there, and you're trying to fish it, and you're like, but there's no wreck there. There's nothing showing on my fish finder. Often the wreck is not actually near where it is indicated is. The wreck may be south of it, east of it, west of it, even north of it. Sometimes the wreck can be anything up to like a half a kilometer away from the actual indicator of where the wreck is. So when you zoom in and you're looking for the wreck marker, where this one is, it's telling you it's a wreck. Here's the wreck just underneath. Um, and that's probably where we... Yeah, I mean, that, that's probably about, you know, 300 meters away um, from the actual marker there. So that's a substantial distance away. So that's just worth bearing in mind that your wreck will be different as well. So I hope this has been useful to understanding Navionics and how to read marks and get marks. Um, my first uh, biggest tip is don't go just where everyone else is going. Look for the things, look for the contours, look for the shelves, uh, look for the reef marks, look for the banks, and uh, think about what kind of fish are going to be there. Um, because predatory fish especially, they like to swim along the banks. 
because they're waiting for the bait fish to come over and hopefully take them. So that's how I would find my mark. And then as you uh, catch your fish and you, you, know, you do really well in the patch and you can see all the fish on your fish finder, then mark it on Navionics and say, that's a really successful uh, place for me. So it means that you can keep coming back to that place and, and you know where it is. So yeah, that's uh, a bit of an overview, how I find my uh, fish marks, how I um, get to new places using Navionics, which is so much easier than it used to be. So yeah, anyone can do it and anyone can go and get a sip and catch fish. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, failing that, <laughs> just download Navionics and, and learn it and have a look around. But hopefully you'll have some success, for, uh, success now at fishing and finding your own marks using Navionics. So yeah, have a great evening and thanks for watching. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, if you thought this was video was helpful, please share it uh, and I will do more helpful videos if I can. Take care. Bye-bye.